An argument as old as time. Is The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween or Christmas movie? Or both? Well, I'm here to tell you that you're all wrong. The Nightmare Before Christmas is an Easter film. Bunny! All jokes aside, I do think it genuinely captures the spirit of both Halloween and Christmas very well, hence its all round appeal. But today I'll be using it as an excuse to make something somewhat Christmas related. Welcome back to Midnight Hobbies, and today I'll be making a 3D film frame from The Nightmare Before Christmas. To frame this piece, we're going to need a frame. And after removing its internal organs, including the pane of glass, I was left with a perfect blank canvas. Or I guess blank frame. <laughs> Using a large piece of paper, I traced out the inside of the frame so that I could use it as a template to sketch out those iconic hills to the sizing I was after, making sure to emphasise the final line so that I don't get them mixed up. I then printed off this screenshot so that I could trace the accurate proportions for the moon and that curly hill that would be our centre focus for the piece. You know, I used to have a cartoonist teacher who told me that tracing is cheating, but what does he know? He only went on to have a very successful career of design and animation. Meanwhile, I get to make spooky things every, like, three months. Oh my god, what am I doing with my life? I punctuated the outline with a pen before slicing each of the hill pieces out to make the four layers that will sit inside the frame. Also, just to explain what I'm actually trying to make, it's halfway between a shadow box and a forced perspective miniature, I guess, as I'm making separate layers that sit closely in the frame, but in design should be giving the impression of depth. Hopefully. And to buff up each layer, I de-skinned some pieces of foam board, so close, and numbered each layer from front to back before using said foam board to trace and cut out each hill. I was originally going to make this a traditional shadow box with paper, but thought building it with foam would allow me to add more shape and texture to the piece. And by the time I had cut out all four pieces, I was feeling pretty good about my decision. And once I tried it in the frame, nice. I did lose a bit of the curly whirly at the end of the big hill due to how finicky it was, so I guess we're now going for inspired opposed to screen accurate. Using my hobby knife, I trimmed the edges of each piece at an angle to give each layer the roundness you commonly find in heels, as well as to naturally blend the dips and rises of each layer. Then starting off with a pen, I began etching in that signature wavy texture, moving on to increasingly narrower utensils for the back two pieces, as naturally it would be finer because it's so far away. And with all of the texturing done, my monkey brain kind of wants to eat this, but that doesn't make for good content, so let's make some gravestones instead. Using the card that lined the front of the picture frame, I drew out a variety of tombstones before cutting them out and dressing the large ones with some trim, leaving me with this lovely lineup. For the moon, I used another piece of cardboard packaging I had lying around that was traced and sliced to size. And now that all the pieces were looking good, it was time to call in the big guy to help me prime them. <laughs> After mixing up some Mod Podge and whatever little black paint I had left, I primed each piece to protect them from all of the layers of paint that's to follow including the moon, which I made sure to dab along the way to remove any potential brush strokes. The moon then got a basic cover of yellow before I went in with increasingly lighter shades spreading out from the centre to help give it some roundness. And after buying more black paint, the hills got covered in a delightfully miserable grey. And to emphasise the force depth of the piece, I coated each one with an increasingly lighter mix of grey, which also helped each level pop out from each other. The gravestones got a gravestone grey with some gentle dabs of white for texture, as well as a cheeky dry brush for the edges too. Each piece got a black grime up at the bottom to better help them blend into the hillsides, and speaking of the hills, I moved on to giving them a heavy black dry brush, only leaving grey in the deep recesses of the carvings. I then painted the frame a deep purple, making sure to stipple it with a brush along the way to give it some texture, before coating the inside black. And thanks to the paper references I made of the landscape, I was able to map out where I wanted all of the gravestones to sit, before gluing them in place on the real deal. Oh, look at the little baby headstones. 
Now that I was happy with the hills, I needed to fill up the back of the frame. So using this back panel of a sketchbook, I sketched the outline of the frame before cutting it out with my hobby knife and coating it in black Mod Podge. I then trialed all of the pieces together and something didn't look quite right. Ironically it was looking a bit flat, so firstly I tried giving the backdrop a gradient to see if that could help. I don't think it did. So while I contemplated what was wrong, I glued all of the hills in place before trying the black backdrop again. I then realised the issue was the moon being too prominent against the backdrop, so I overconfidently stuck it in place before giving it a bit of painted luminescence to blend it in. And now that it's looking a bit more normal, I stuck it in place and that's really all there is to it. Thanks for watching everyone. If you want to see more film frames, be sure to check out some of my other builds, or subscribe if you so wish to see what I'll try to concoct in the future. Wishing you all a happy holiday and I'll catch you in the new year.